All right, we're back again on our EC235 EP3 journey. Um, we're still in EP3. I know we've, uh, we went through duct detectors this last time. Today, we're on pull stations. Um, and I'm, Drew and I were talking about this. We're really surprised we even have to do a video about it, but we have so many issues with vendors and ITM personnel testing these devices incorrectly. And I'm sure you're thinking, how can you test a pull station incorrectly? Well, we're gonna get into it. So um, first, let's talk about the code requirements before we dig into all these different device types. NFPA 72 2010 is what we fall under from a healthcare perspective uh, because of the CMS adoption of NFPA 101 2012. So we go back to the 2010 edition of 72. Table 14319E tells us we have to do inspections semi-annually. This is often missed by healthcare facilities. Um, why are we doing an inspection for these devices? Well, the main reason is they're right at, they're, they're at, at, at uh, waist level, a little bit higher, but they're hit by carts all the time. They, you'll see them dangling, falling off. You'll see uh, um, them just broken. Drew actually had to fix one last week. We'll post a picture uh, down below um, of it, but the entire cover was just ripped off of it. So it was just sitting on the wall ripped off. So you gotta do inspections of them uh, semi-annually. So if that's not in your CMMS system, go ahead and add it. Uh, then we have table 14, 422, 14E. This is the actual functional test requirements for it. Um, and what it says in there is, number one, defer to manufacturer's recommendations, but it's a functional, it says do an actual functional test. And if you go to the handbook, it actually talks about what that means. We're just gonna go dive in straight into it. So this is a uh, newer device, it's a notifier device, but it is a uh, double action pull station. What that means is it takes two triggers before the alarm goes off. So I have to push in pull down. And you can actually see on there it says activated uh, whenever I do that and it locks into place. Um, so what that does in here is it actually transfers from a normal, the switch from a normal to an activated state. Um, so this is an addressable, as you can tell in here, uh, addressable device. Just to recap on addressable devices, at the panel, whatever the, the loop and address of this is, that's what shows up. So you know exactly what device went off. Um, and if your panel's programmed correctly, which hopefully it is, it'll tell you what location that is, right? So, um, but what we see too often is that uh, ITM personnel will come in, they open this up, and instead of pulling this down, they just flip this switch. That's not a functional test. That's not the intent. That's not what we're supposed to be doing. The reason why, we're talking about plastic components. Over time, guys, these plastic components break. So you gotta make sure that it locks, it, it actually triggers it, it locks it into place, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. So uh, follow your ITM guys someday and just make sure, you know, see if they're doing it the right way or not. Um, so looking at a, a little bit older device, this is a single action, it's a, a simplex, and it's, it is addressable, it's got an individual addressable uh, module and it's simplex is a little bit different. They use dip switches um, instead, but Similar, same, same concept, you have to physically activate. The only difference is this is a single action. So you have to physically pull it down one time. So, um, moving on, we have a conventional. This is, a, this is much older, uh, but it, 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 you'll see a lot of them in, in older hospitals. Uh, but this is a non-addressable device. It's part of a conventional fire alarm system. They can be converted to addressable using addressable modules uh, and put in, uh, but, but normally they're a part of either tied to a zone addressable module um, or tied to a card in the panel. Uh, but again, it's, so it'll just say, when this activates, it'll just say zone one. You're not gonna know if it's a heat detector or a smoke detector or a pool station or what. So it just says fire alarm. Um, these are a little bit different. So these actually have glass or plastic breaks in it. Um, as you can see, Drew and I were playing around, accidentally broke, broke the first one, so we put in a, a plastic one. Uh, but to properly test it, you have to first open it up, which is gonna set off the alarm, take out your plastic break, close it back up, and then pull it down. Similar to the plastic, even though it's made of metal, it can still break. These, you have to make sure this locks into place. Um, if, if, if it's not properly locking into place, because it's just a, a release switch, um, it, can, it can actually not, not function properly. So you can partially pull it down, it won't fully activate. So you just gotta make sure you do that. Then you have to open it back up, put back in your, your glass break. 
Moving on, we've got a uh, key operated. You're gonna find these in psychiatric areas, in Alzheimer's units, um, in areas where you don't want somebody to, to readily or, or activate it. Uh, you want some sort of trained staff uh, or personnel to activate it. So all it is is a, it's a, a key. You have to have a key. Uh, where you have these, all staff within that area have to have a key 24 seven. So that's one of the, the big requirements here. It is still addressable. Um, it's got its dip switches and, and module built in. And it's a similar function to, to this one, uh, just key operated instead. And then lastly, we've got the fun one. We've got a explosion proof unit. Uh, and you're gonna find these where you're doing fuel, uh, jet fuel, jet fueling. Most common in healthcare is actually gonna be your helipads. These are required to be surrounding your helipads. Um, and it is it is a resettable, it's a single action pull down um, and it's resettable on, on the face. Uh, it is a non-addressable, so you have to have a module tied to it um, or it could be part of this zone address point. You could just say um, your helipad fire alarm is going off. Um, but common issue we find with these is water will seep into them uh, and cause corrosion um, of the connections. So. Uh, again, you know, it, I, I know it's surprising that we're having to, to talk about this, but, but just follow up with your ITM team, uh, make sure they're testing it properly. Uh, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised um, that I, I bet if, you, if they haven't been, you're going to find a few of them that have broken. So um, last but not least, most importantly, uh, Drew, say hi to everybody. Thanks for coming up with Hello. this idea uh, and being willing to share with everybody. Um, until next time, happy learning.